Huge announcement, gang. My debut half-hour comedy special Ooh. is available March 14th right here on the RU Garbage YouTube channel. Check it out, baby. Gang, let's blow this puppy up. Like it, share it, tell the whole squad, blow it up for Kippy. Do it! Yeah. Welcome to another exciting edition of Are You Garbage? The show where you find out if your favorite comedians are classy individuals or absolute trash. Now, here are your hosts, Kevin Ryan and H. Foley. Hey, everybody out there, and welcome back to everybody's favorite podcast. This is Are You Garbage? Oh, yeah. It's that little show we sit down with your favorite comedians, and we find that they're to be classy. Yeah. Or they're just a big old piece of trash. Trash, trash, trash. I'm your host, H. Foley, coming at you on a beautiful day. We're out back here at Tootie's in a new edition. She just got a new shower curtain upstairs. Okay. See-through. Ooh, watchy, watchy. A little bit of a freak in her. A little peek when I'm brushing, <laughs> when I'm brushing my teeth. My co-host is coming at you from across the table. He is the CEO of are you garbage he is an international businessman and he's got a brand new special out give it up for kj kevin james ryan everybody hey what up gang Look at thanks ya. for tuning in everybody Woo. new special out tomorrow if you're listening to this today it comes out march 14th yes, 7 p.m right here on the ayg youtube channel Woo, baby baby live premiere get in there mix it up in the chat I'm down there at the fillmore in philly down there at the fillmore in the philly the boys went home kippy shot a half hour comedy special so check it out all produced by the magic man uh-oh how about a nice shout out to our our producer extraordinaire the old magic man as cue ball said he is also a director extraordinaire t-bone mcmuff scruffins toby mcmullen everybody yeah m- multi-hyphenate voice of a generation so <laughs> <is that> out. <laughs> and shout out to one new guy luke mr luke dempsey killed it on the ah, on I, I gotta tell you tip. we got it we got a home run of a fucking squad over good here good squad tight as, squad as, like the squad as you, i'm sure you know most of, if not everybody if you haven't checked out the big mans go check out the big mans up there right now go check it out please do uh they they, they smashed that one they smashed mine it's fantastic we're super we're excited, uh, and that's available at rugarbage.com YouTube page, mm-hmm. not rugarbage.com, uh, on YouTube, full video, and as you know, those numbers are... True to roof. I, was, I thought we fucking Cooking. missed it there. I got nervous. I didn't know what I was doing. I was <laughs> out. Hey, no a big man. announcement. You got a special out, baby. <laughs> a special out. Go check it out. Half hour comedy special. I'm excited. It's uh, as, the same as the big man. It's what we've been touring with, so uh, we're happy to put it on some wax and get it out there to the peoples. Can't thank you guys enough. We love each and every one of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're here for what we like to call... A family episode. Some would say. Just the boys, the bozos, and the homies Mm -hmm. sitting down together. Circle in the wagons. Circle in the wagons as we like. Do running with a time ske- to time. running with a skeleton crew. I always love that saying. Skeleton, skeleton crew. Running with a skeleton crew. Yeah. Just a couple of fucking guys who know how to operate. You catch my <laughs> drift. I got a wheel man, a fucking trigger guy. What else you need? Skeleton crew. Knows how to keep their mouth shut and owns a ski bag. <laughs> <laughs> and can get rid of gold coins if need be. That's what I'm talking about. Kind of question for you boys. I'm listening. Um your toilet brush. First of all, do you have one? Yeah. Toilet brush? Yes. Did you grow up with one? No. no. I, I don't think we... I, I think there was one there solely for cleaning. It wasn't cl- It wasn't to clean the skids. You know what I mean? What's the skids? Like, if there was a skid mark, that would just get left. Like, as a kid, that would just get left. I oh, think. yeah. I, was, yeah, I, didn't, I wasn't I didn't know it. that you could move those. Other than try to pee on them, I didn't know you could sure. do it. I'd say you knew my old man was in there. Okay. A couple of claw marks, as he called them. <laughs> God damn. Dragging a demon back to hell. You knew. When you Already into in. potty humor this early in? We are. I had a question for you. Um, do you use that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, hard-hitting journalistic <laughs> question from the big man. Chalk Chalkerson, gang. If you say for your back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you ever brush your teeth with that? Really get a molar clean. I'm going to lose it. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, use it in general? Use it on, the, like, okay, so when, when, when I clean the bathroom, mm-hmm. okay, that, that's well documented. I make a little bit of a mess in there. I got to stay on top of it. I have my little, uh, little Swiffer Butler that I do after after I tanky keep everything nice. But when I clean the toilet, um, my usual thing is I pull everything away, okay, from that area. I flush the toilet. I spray Clorox whatever in there, so it's it's clean water. It's disinfected. It's soapy water, and then I'll dunk it in there. 
and I'll do the outside and the floor around no! the no! no, 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 really, interior only, yeah. man. I, think? I, I thought you were gonna say I dump it in the water, then swish it around and clean the bowl. That's what you do. You're, that can't, that's, that's for, no, what? <laughs> no kidding. No, you, dude. I mean, I get what, hold on. I take it, I no. dunk it in no. there, so it's disinfected. No. It's like the Barbasol stuff at the barbershop. It's in the blue liquid. Listen. I yeah, go heavy with the Clorox that, spray. Dude, the Red Cross couldn't clean up the mess you make yeah, in there, Yeah, that's wild, That's crazy. Dude. So, but I understand that, yes, there is, huh. there is Clorox or some sort of disinfectant in the water. That makes sense. But I don't think that ice tea. I don't think that brush is fully clean to be rubbing on. Clor extra. Dude, Clorox kills everything. Nah, dude, there's 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 particles on that brush that Clorox ain't killing. The it's not going to disintegrate them. There's things in them. It wires. neutralizes them, though, buddy. You're you're bringing it up because you know you're. It's not. It's not on the up and up. I don't right? advertise it in the <laughs> home. No kidding. She don't. Yeah, I would not do that. I this, use this that. isn't a squeegee on the quarter panel, dude. Like, yeah, that's. <laughs> I get it in there real good, get it all the Cloroxy, and then I do I, the whole I, outside, I, the sides. I make sure I get in there, I'll and then do a little bit of the floor we, to scrub that we off. We get it. We get. We, I get your relative logic, but I think you're overestimating how. And the sink. I do the sink. <laughs> Couple pots and pans that I can't get them burn stains out of. It was goddamn chilly night. <laughs> Everybody, stuff, everybody's got sticks. pink eye. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. God, yeah, that's really. I don't. I mean, I don't think. So how do you clean the outside of the? To you, so you don't do the top of. Okay, I'm talking about the porcelain part, like where behind the seat where it gets that's a little a paper crusty. towel. You don't you don't take the brush and do back there? I think that brush is for the inside of the toilet bowl. Huh. That's why you put it back in that like kind of vacuum X chamber. That thing's what's oh, going on in oh, there? Oh man, man. Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> We're turning into the same guy. Brutal. Uh no kidding. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm listen. wrong. Uh, yeah, I mean I'm not saying I'm I'll uh, listen. Th th Really? <laughs> yeah, dude. The guy who lives in a trash can. I mean, <laughs> dude, you're I'm, not wrong. I'm way off on a couple of things, I think, aren't I? I think you're better off just spraying that Clorox on the floor and then even using your foot with some pa some paper towels. And I just, do that. I wouldn't be putting that. That brush should live in the bowl and then go back and that's... <laughs> That's like a relative airtight thing you put it in. Back in the holster. Yeah. <laughs> Take it easy with that thing, will you? Yeah, that's nuts. No kidding. Uh, this is a very New York thing because nobody has. Do you have a garbage disposal now? No. No one in New York has garbage disposals unless you're fucking real hoity-toity. However, that doesn't stop me from uh, certain yeah, things. Of course. I've gotten, you know, I get. if I'm lazy, I'll get liberal. From working in restaurants, I learned that if you take your finger and you have some stuff in there and as the water's going, you give it a little... A little swirl, a little mush. It, nah, a little, just a little spin. It, it works itself. Create out. a vortex. Yeah, you gotta it, create a, a it whirlpool. It works itself out. I mean, I was it, trying to get some cherry seeds down there the other day. Just, <laughs> try, trying to get an old pair of shoes down there. <laughs> just picture you with a two by four, <laughs> <laughs> shoving some. That's my shoving stick. Yeah. Um, we uh. How do I use, and th this is very New Do you York. have a garbage disposal? No. Oh. No one in New York, unless, like, you're fucking, I've been in apartments. It's so crazy how you figure Seinfeld's out, got one. That's how you learn. You, you live in New York. You walk, go into someone's, they got a dishwasher. They got this. They, like, they have everything that, like, a suburban home would have, and you'd be like, you're a millionaire. I got you know a dishwasher I mean? now. A dishwasher. Full sure. size. Oh, Not them cool. little John. I got the little John. Ooh, man. Yikes. Fucking halfway through a snack, that thing's full. <laughs> man. The way I use spoons like and a, Like a falafel place downtown. <laughs> That's uh -uh. bad, dude. Got the whole big uh, boy. Um, and the stand-up washer and dryer. Yeah, I ain't got that either. But when you go into someone's house that has all appliances that a suburban home would have, you start looking like, whoo wee mm -hmm. this place is all right. You ever been in somebody's apartment and they have, like, the, the three-quarter size fridge? Oh, yeah. Yikes. Yeah. I was just in someone's apartment that had that. And they're like, this is the fridge? I was like, what? what, are you, what are you, That's a cooler, dude. What, I mean, a dorm room here? It's a Yeti. <laughs> that thing don't even, that thing ain't got a plug on it. I never maximized my uh, college boy fridge in uh, college. I never had any money to. Nah. It was I, like a half a bottle of water, some Gatorade I stole from the cafeteria or yeah. something. That was, it was always empty. My boys were really good with that, man. They, I would do this, but I never did it enough where I really took advantage of it. But taking stuff from the cafeteria was obviously, you know, a big thing. But they would, they, I'd like, I, I'd sneak in there. They, it'd be like a, it'd be like a 7-Eleven in there. Like chicken sandwiches stacked up. Mm -hmm. I never did it though.
I drank no. a lot of my friends' beers out of those things. Yeah. <laughs> never had one going myself. Never really got one cooking. I, I was... Mine was all right. I put my weed in there. <laughs> got weed in here, cowboy. And that was big. For a while in the in the mid-90s, Kind Bud was popping. You kids don't know about Kind Bud. It's all Kind Bud I used now. to move Kind Bud. It's all Allegedly. Kind Bud now. But that's the good stuff. You'd KB. Put, you'd put a little, a little orange peel and... Uh, a little orange peel in your bud in there. To, to rehydrate it because it was not the good stuff. You were smoking <laughs> sticks and stems. Now it would fuck fluff it up, but you're right. It would, it would take a while to burn. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of smoke. A lot of crackling on that bad boy. You had to put a Dura log in there get that thing cooking. Oh, every, every little weed trick like that. Never works. It's I, not that it didn't. It was just you felt like because when you got a good when you got a good satchel, you wanted to really <laughs> stretch it out. You delivered on a horse <laughs> satchel. Fucking <laughs> like Pony Express. Trying to here. skirt around the sensors. You know what I mean? It's like a '60s pop song. <laughs> Can't tell them what we're talking about. You know what I mean? Talking about doing the shoebaloo, everybody. <laughs> you know what the shoebaloo was? Butt stuff. <laughs> Um, you'd want to like, you know, you'd want to stretch that out a little bit. You, you took a little more time with it because it was always great when it was fresh and it was the, the cellophane was rolled nice. And eventually you're just ripping that thing open and stuff it in your eyeball. <laughs> I think <laughs> and you're all headed up late night in there. I think from the, the back back to the fridge, I never had the cash to be like, oh, I'm going to spend $15 and just let it sit in my fridge for when I casually want a beer. You know what I mean? It was, like, it was like a chocolate bar. Never. Like guys had like, you know, cho- like chocolate bars in the freezer part for like months. No, it's like I'm a very, and still am a very big, I buy and consume. Give me, buy, give me. buy and consume. I'm not hoarding away. You're I an addict. Hey, who are you talking to? <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was very like, you know, even now it's like you come over, I don't have any beers at the house. Because, like, I drink them. You know what I mean? It's not like a... If I came over to your house right now, could you offer me a proper drink? What do you want? Like a scotch or something? Yeah. I got I got some liquor. As, like, friends would come over or whatever, and, you know, I, they'd bring me a bottle, or I bought a bottle, or a birthday, or Could you something. do it in a nice rocks glass? with got a, a nice rocks glass. Some ice? You have ice in the house? Mm, yeah, we got the big cubes. You got the big she cubes? Stays, she stays on top of them. I don't. The big cubes. Got the big cubes. Um, maybe a little dog hair in there if you like it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stay out of the freezer. <laughs> he knows where the Totitos are. <laughs> but what about the garbage disposal? Oh, we had the... Will you use the toilet as a garbage disposal? Because we will. You're busting my chops about the toilet brush? Uh, what do you You're putting mean? fecal matter on the floor. <laughs> I'm disposing of... Like, what are you talking like about? Like if stuff's in a pot. Like old rice a Not rice a That you can scrape into a trash can. Uh-huh. Well, like, let's say the slow cooker was running for a couple hours. Whatever's in there will just, that's just like a, that's like a heavy duke in there. Hey, dude, you got tomahawk <laughs> bone in your, in your turlet. I think she flushed a full onion last night, if I'm being <laughs> honest with you. I was like, babe, I don't think that can go bloop. I just heard it sound like she dropped a pool ball in there. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking cue ball. No, dude, I don't go in there. Yeah, that's yeah. even grosser to me. No, 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 my buddy in Derek. In New York, you have to. Dude, you have nowhere no. to dispose of this stuff. You don't put it in the trash. No. Then it's sitting in the trash. You goddamn- take it out. <laughs> no. My buddy Derek put me on that. I watched him take a thing of ramen that it was like half full and dump it in the toilet. I was like, what are you doing? He goes, noodles go in the toilet, man. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I like, right. Yeah, I wouldn't feel right walking in there with the pot. Feel, I'd feel like the pot yeah, was listen, contaminated. Yeah, no, no shit, because your whole, your, your whole you've wiped, toilet is... Fucking... You've wiped poop on most surfaces. Listen, am I proud when I'm doing Bleached it? Bleached poop. Is it my best moment when I'm standing over the standing over the, the toilet with a fucking that city slow right cooker? There, man. No, but you got no you got nothing else to do. Mm-mm. I've had some I've had some mishaps where I'm cleaning the apartment, and I throw some stuff in there, and then I go and I forget about it. And I go look oh. back and I'm like, what happened? What did yeah, I do? Yeah, call nine one one real quick. <laughs> I don't know what I got, but it's something. I sh- I shit out a short rib. What the. Fuck? <laughs> And a fork, <laughs> an old boot floating in there. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's uh, it's not proud, but it's like sometimes when you're like, oh, I'm in a rush or something, and you know, Mm-mm. you just got nowhere to fucking put it. I can't believe in all your New York City living, you never did that, Mm-mm. not once. I guess you weren't a real big cook most of the I've time. I dumped a stash or two down there when, <laughs> when, I, when the fucking somebody, heat somebody, was closing in. When somebody was banging on the door. <laughs> Karen, no! <laughs> 
out. <laughs> That's was, all we had, Karen. It's just Mrs. Rossettini from next door. <laughs> it's going to borrow a cup of sugar. <laughs> hey, answer the door. I got a gun behind me. <laughs> oh, hey, Mrs. Rossettini. Good to see you. You need help opening a jar of pickles? <laughs> Meanwhile, she was about to get clapped. It's cost me my weekend, you dumb broad. What are you doing? <laughs> it's all we had. Uh, I'm a big soaker. I'll tell you that. Late. I mean, listen. I'm I'm as lazy as they come. Is so you're. I soaked a coffee cup with yogurt in it that had sat for about twelve seconds. You what? I ate yogurt out of a coffee cup. Oh, you soaked that can go right in the dishwasher. I soaked that a couple out, a couple days. Let it loosen up a little bit. Not loosen. No. <laughs> yeah. I at one point I lived in an apartment where I was washing my I was washing my dishes. That's cra- in the bathtub. In the bathtub. That's crazy. Why? That you can't you can't you Why, uh, dude? It was the, the sink only, was gross. It was the well I destroyed Grody. I destroyed it. I the mirror on top of it got smashed and it all got all full of glass and collapsed. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. That's a crime scene. <laughs> well, it was an illegal apartment. There was no kitchen, no heat. Chicago was awful. It was a- <laughs> This guy's got squatters rights. You're taking it easy, man. Just doing his dishes with Pantene Pro V. <laughs> I've done that. I've, I've used shampoo. No. On your dishes? Yeah. No. And I've also used, I did this not that long ago. For some reason, um, maybe when I wasn't feeling good or something like that. <laughs> your boss is coming out curly. <laughs> <laughs> this was supposed to be lasagna. <laughs> Look at the sheen on that thing. Shiny. A lot of volume on that angel air. Um... I washed my body in uh, dawn the other day. I've had I've, I told you I used to do it. I I got I loved doing it when I was landscaping uh-huh. at the last house. You get the hose out because of the poison ivy, and you completely wash yourself sure. off with that in your uh, in your cutoff jeans. Man, talk about feeling like summer, baby. Mm-hmm. Woo! But I did that the other a couple weekends ago for some reason. I just felt like really getting a good scrubbing, so I used my my loofah and I used dawn. Then the bird saw that and was like, what the hell yeah, is going on? Here? I mean, that's that's animalistic. At this. Like, if you're out, I'll give you that. Like, if you're, like, out of something. But still, I would argue, I don't know what kind of life you're living if you are you run out of soap and you, a, a, a water or shampoo ain't going to, you know, just do the job to get the day done. You know what I mean? Sure. It's, it's not like you're out fucking, you know, you're not like a mud farmer or something <laughs> like that. Like, you're fucking. Working on a derrick. You know what I mean? You come in here, you podcast for two, three hours, you go, oh. I like a good scrubbing every once in a while. I like a good exfoliation. Man, yeah. the, the money I would pay to see a prime H Foley on the side of a house scrubbing down. Ooh, <laughs> oh, a tight little body back oh, then. Oh, yeah, Talk, buddy. You're talking about a buck 75, buck 80. He was six years old, but <laughs> store. <laughs> what are you looking at, mister? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> looking it was for all free. Right. No undies on, probably no socks. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? Letting the little guy hang out. <laughs> <laughs> just picture the top of the jeans unbuttoned. You're just like, Pour <laughs> some sugar on me. <laughs> I'm washing the car, r- rubbing my boobs on the window. Fucking Foley Catane over here. <laughs> Kip, this is Helix. Shout out to Helix. You know him. You love him. You sleep on every night. Hell, we both do. I have hanky-panky time in mind. Hey, different ones. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Same model, but what sure. are you going to do? Gang, Helix, best mattress ever invented. You don't got to go to the mattress store. All you got to do is hop online. You take their quiz. They want to know how you sleep. They want to know if you sleep hot, if you sleep cold, do you sleep fat, do you sleep skinny, and they'll match up with the perfect mattress right for you. How long does the quiz take, you ask, Kevin? I don't know. Two tree minutes. That's it. Real You're short quiz. Out. Get uh, matched to one of the 20 unique mattresses. I'm a Twilight man myself. They got 20 now? Me and a bird. Uh, they'll give you a 100-night uh, night trial so you can try it out on try it out on your own bed at home instead of rolling around in some weird-ass mattress store where some guy with coffee breasts staring at you, tugging his root. Uh, whether you sleep on your back, your side, or your stomach, Helix has something for you. They even make mattresses for the big man yeah. uh, and even ones for kids. So here is the turkey. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for all you garbage listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash garbage and use the code helixpartner20. This is their best offer yet and won't last long. That's helixsleep.com slash garbage with code helixpartner20. With Helix Sleep, better, with Helix, better sleep starts now. Yeah. Hey, done.
Okay, let's talk about Mint Mobile, baby. Shout out to Mint Mobile. Let's be honest. We've all been getting ripped off by our cell phone provider for They're years. They're screwing us. Screwing them. 200 300 bucks. They try to throw this in. They try to throw that in. Not with Mint Mobile. We're talking about 15 bucks a month. When you purchase a three-month plan, you'll get unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest... 5G network. That's right. Uh, 5G, baby. As you know, my family's been a user of Mint Mobile for a very long time, way before this podcast even started, and mm-hmm. we still are because it's fan freaking tastic. You get to keep your same phone, your phone number, all your contacts. Uh, the only change is the money in your pocket, baby. Yeah. Uh, to get this new customer offer, uh, your new three month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash garbage. That's mintmobile. Dot com slash garbage. You get to cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month. Mintmobile.com slash garbage and uh, additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. Sure. Go over to Mint Mobile. See them for details. Now back to the show. Back to the show. <laughs> All right. Enough of this. About Enough's my enough. Laundry habits and whatnot. <laughs> um, Let's get into the. The meat and potatoes. The meat and potatoes is a big man says this is a family episode. So as you know, uh, when you join a Patreon, we will answer your garbage questions on the air. It's the best way to do it. The homies get the first crack at it. And I got to be honest with you, the greatest website of all time. Check it out. I Listen, the num- men lie, women lie. The numbers don't lie. Go over there. Peruse around, see what, you know, you're going to like what you see. 15,000 strong in that army of garbage on Patreon. Yeah, 15,000 people have seen it and been like, this is what I'm in for. It's Listen, it's the best bang for your buck. It's, it's better than a value than a, some of your major streaming services. Plus you get that hard feelings where we let it all hang out. Yeah, some of my best work in hard feelings. <laughs> Uh, but let's see Tell here. Tell each other how we really feel. <laughs> yeah. This one's from uh, Pierce, $10 Canadian investor. Shout out go. to you. Uh, never had one read. This is nuts. Is it garbage if your parents get in a fight and your mom ends up on the couch instead of your dad? <laughs> <laughs> Man. What is going on? Who wears the pants in that household? I might have seen that once or twice at the Foley's. That, she'd have to be real pissed. I've never seen my parents in the same room, but... Uh, <laughs> Or that's nuts. Or the guy is so soft that she's like, no cuddles tonight. And he's like, baby, no, don't go. Yeah, it's got, that's what I'm saying. She's probably like, fuck you, I'm at. Or I don't know who's in the do- dude. If your mom's ending up in the doghouse, what'd she do? <laughs> that's fucking wild. <laughs> having sex with another lady. Yikes. <laughs> I know you're out there running around on me. I'm home cooking. <laughs> Man, uh, I I don't think I've ever was that a normal thing. I didn't have that in the necessary thing. My dad like on a, the couch. That's a very big trope of like, you know, you're sleeping. You know, now they would usually go to bed just angry, screaming at each other. Yeah, they'd yeah. go to bed angry at each other. They just wake up and keep fighting. Sure, not talk. They would not talk. It'd be it'd, it'd be there'd be a a silence in the house. You could feel it. Oh, like heavy water. They're in that bed like those Russian boxers who fight in the phone booths. Uh huh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just, you just wake up ready was, to go. That was like, a wild video. By yeah, the way. It'd be quiet. My dad would get up. You wouldn't hear. He wouldn't talk to anybody. It wouldn't be a word. Just out the door. I remember. didn't know if you were ever going to see him again. He'd show back up. I guess they talked during the day or something. No, they didn't. They didn't talk. They didn't address it, and they just kept living. You're yeah, like, fair enough. You're like a bug, dude. <laughs> watching him leave. Like, is he ever coming back? I know. Oh, a bunch <laughs> of times crazy. on that. You're peeing on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does it when he's nervous. <laughs> Henry, stop it. There was a few times where I was on his side. Like, <laughs> yeah, if he didn't come back, I wouldn't blame him. To be honest with you. <laughs> you keep pulling his stupid shit, <laughs> screaming at her. <laughs> he's gonna leave for good one time. I remember hearing, uh, it's actually just normal, uh, I come from a very yelly household family. Sure, (laughs) Um, I'm aware. I remember I would be in my dad's, I'd be in my dad's house upstairs in my room watching TV, like wrestling or something, so it was like a, uh, you know, it was a commotional show. I'm really going at it this week. (laughs) I'd be like, that doesn't sound like Hulk. You're like, (laughs) and I would hit mute and you would just hear him, it'd be coming through the vents of like wherever they were screaming at each other. Yeah. You knew what was going on. I'm like, oh God, this ain't 
gonna be great. Man, I used to always creep down on the steps and hear, hear the hear it out. I didn't. It scared. It scared. It was like uh, I just wanted to end. I was just like, man, cause it's also if you got, I've been caught on the stairs, and that don't make it any better. You want some of this too? <laughs> yeah, because you think you know where they are in the house. It's like thermal mapping. You think no. they, you think they, you know where they are. All right, they're in the kitchen. Then she walked to the living room. He went to the family room. It's like you're playing Call of Duty. Uh huh. <laughs> and then this he, guy's throwing his voice. <laughs> Then he, you don't hear anything for a couple seconds, and he turns the corner to the hallway and the stairs. How are you doing? I was just getting milk. <laughs> I got my I got a glass up to the wall. Yeah. Eh, dysfunctional. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Mom on the couch, though. Now, I might have seen that once or twice, maybe. Maybe. I can't I can't recall. O- only because my dad was snoring. That my dad might. I think my dad would get up. He would get elbowed enough times or whatever to be like, I'm just going to fucking couch it sure. just to get through the night. Pre pre CPAP. Yeah. Yeah. By the time uh, by the time I came on the scene, now granted, my dad's parents were much older. What scene is this? In the the <laughs> Earth scene. Uh, okay, that's what you're referring to. <laughs> you're referring scene. to your birth as becoming on the scene. Oh, hey man, I'm on the scene. <laughs> I'm here, baby. All right, you know just I'm, I'm, I'm just you, you've been in a lot of scenes I'm until trying... I rolled in. How about that? Okay. Until I popped up. Came on the scene. Became online. <laughs> Earth scene is crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Before I showed a little also, bit, got the party sh- started. You know what I'm saying? Sh- Live this to, dump up a little bit. <laughs> showing up to a scene means implies to me that you were doing something somewhere else before. I was. Then I got on the scene. You know what I mean? I was. I just can't remember who I was in a past life. Mm-hmm. I don't think anybody would note, to be honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, I might have done some bad things. Yeah, sure. Probably a portly bread thief, <laughs> <I'd> I guess. <laughs> Tony the Steeler or something like that from uh, Britain. Um, what? Jack- <laughs> <laughs> Tony, I was trying to find Tony the Steeler. I was Maybe trying to Jack the Bomber. What are you talking about? <laughs> I was thinking Jack the Ripper. Tony the Steeler. Which he always scared me, Jack the Ripper. He still do- I don't know what he did. They never called. I him. always thought it was a barber. No, <laughs> no, it's Sweeney Todd. Oh, that's okay. a Broadway. That's a Broadway musical. <laughs> I thought he was giving nice fades. I didn't know. <laughs> Slit in your throat. Singing the Are whole they're not time. to say Sweeney Todd's a vampire? No, I think I think I listen. I'm not. <laughs> I thought he was a pro skateboarder. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. Uh, Jack, Jack the Ripper. <laughs> yeah, I thought you meant Sweeney Todd. Cool. Sweeney Todd's a pretty good skater name too. Oh, that's nice. Uh, Sweeney Todd. I don't know if that's based on a historical figure, but it's a it's a Broadway show about a barber that kills people. I don't know why he. All kills right, so people. I'm not that far He invented off. the rodeo 720. Sweeney Todd. <laughs> <laughs> First got to do a 900. Uh, Jack the Ripper. I think w- was a real dude. Was a real serial killer. I think. Yeah, in okay. London. I watched. A- I think they had speculation of who he was, but I don't know if he was ever caught. If you ever want to watch a good movie on it, From Hell with Johnny Depp and uh, Heather Graham. Well, I think he was new never caught. A took new out stuff, Women of the Night. New mm. stuff came out. They think he came to New York because there's a bunch of overlap between ah. London. Like uh, there's a bunch of. I just saw something on that. They watched the beginning of a documentary on Netflix or something. There's overlap between uh, serial killer there and here hmm. around the same time of Jason wow. Ripper. Yeah, From Hell is really good though. Really good movie. Um, Ian something. Not McShane. The guy who was uh, the Hobbit. Ian. He, he was uh, he was Bilbo Baggins in Lord of the Rings. He plays the guy who they think it was. It was a, He was a doctor. He was a medical like research doctor, like a rich guy that was doing it for, I don't know, for whatever reason. Something with the queen. I can't remember. But still scared the shit out of me. I'll tell you that. Yeah. I don't mind the couch every once in a while, to be honest with I'm you. I'm a big couch guy. It's it's. Oh, it's, I know what I was going to say. I'm sorry to cut you off. By the time by the time I was born, and my my dad's parents were a little bit were older when they had my dad. They were already in. They had separate rooms in their house. I didn't know any Why? different. Uh, I th- I I heard that it was because my grandfather snored, but then later you find out that. That scene was a bloodbath as well. Sure. So, I don't know. They could have hated each other as far as I know. Yeah. They're sweet to me, and I love them to death. I don't... Uh, Shout out to Nanny and Pop. I feel like you hear more and more about that now of, like, not of of just, like... Uh, Some aunt with too many glasses of wine in her just tell you the real deal on everything before you, uh, yeah. before you, sh- before you were born. Sure. Yeah, I always get the... You always know when you're when you're ready for some real nice tea when one of your aunts goes, well, he ain't a saint. Mm -hmm. Sign me up. Whatever. You've been waiting to get this out, Aunt Patty. I love it. Yeah. Sitting around with a couple of drunk aunts when you were a kid. 
They're t- they still like doing it. What are you talking about? Now they're letting it all fly. Yeah, telling you how it really was. As they're getting <clears throat> older, they're, they, they're, they're coming to, they're like, listen, I ain't going to be here much longer. Yeah. He's a fucking piece. He's a no good piece of shit. My Aunt Colleen, God rest her soul, was like that. She was awesome in every way, shape, or form, but the best was like when she would just come over to dinner at my mom's and it would just be like me, my mom. This is when I was older. Mm-hmm. It would be like me, my mom, my dad, her, and uh, maybe the bird or like my brother or something like that. And you had her all to yourself. She'd tell you good stories, mm-hmm. sit there, have a nice, have a nice cocktail. Some nice. of my some of my best memories were uh, with my aunt were with one of my aunts was my aunt Karen. My aunt Karen and my mom were real tight when we were growing up. And uh, we would go, my aunt Karen would take us down the shore. We'd stay at like a motel in mm-hmm. North Wildwood somewhere, the Seashell Motel, the Buccaneer, the whatever, like all those like real motelies. <laughs> the and I'd get up at the ass crack at dawn and she'd take me out and we'd go. Oh. Uh, to, we'd, she, we'd go get donuts at this place, Frog Hollow off Route 9 out there on like, you know, mainland or whatever. Man, I remember one time we stopped at a cow door and she's like, you can get anything you want. Man, you couldn't tell me shit. I got a Harley, I have a, a Harley Davidson bandana that I that I fucking proper put. <laughs> I was like seven years old, dude. I proper put on. It had like a skull on fire and everything. And I walked back to the hotel. I walked back to the motel. My mom was like, what the fuck are you doing? I was ripping. Dude. A montage of just get your motor run and you're seeing donuts. <laughs> Talk about, <laughs> just get a little back in. Talk about Kip the Ripper, daddy. <laughs> I was, that's when I came on the scene. Talk about scenes. The Buccaneer Motel was never the same. The guy at the front desk drops his sunglasses as you walk by. Eating a big fry plate. Man. What am I doing? I'm breaking the rules. That's what I'm doing, baby. Right. How you doing, Tuts? Hey, some to more apple it. juice, please. Yeah, that's what my favorite memories are down the shore also, too. My Uncle Mike and my mom always got up early. For some reason, they were both up having a heater. And I was, a, I was a nervous kid, so I always woke up at, like, 6. Mm-hmm. And they would be like, come on, we're going to go to the diner. Me and my Uncle Mike and my mom go to the diner, go to the chatterbox. Woo-wee! That's where I learned about Scrapple. I remember for a good couple of weeks, we sat out on the second floor of that, uh, you know, the motel. So the second floor of the motel, we had a handful of chairs. I think we had two rooms. So we had a handful of chairs. Like, you know, we made the space in the middle, like, Post ours. it up up there. Post it up. And my aunt's friend, it was like a family friend, uh, on the Chiba. I didn't know at the time, but I, Doobie. I would just sit there with her. <laughs> sure smoke weird cigarettes, lady. <laughs> He's ripping a binger. Just like, what was that kid? The sweet bandana. <laughs> I feel a little funny. Are you hungry? <laughs> in a contact Man, line? and she would do the crossword puzzle in the newspaper, and I would sit there. I thought I was participating. And that was like the. I thought we were going to work. I was like, we got to get up early. We got me and me and Nancy got to hit the crossword. <laughs> I got well, enough of these. Enough of the boardwalk. I got. I got shit to do. That thing's a real bear too. I tell you, <laughs> she's just writing down nonsense. <laughs> yeah, so you probably have a pen, dude. <laughs> Man, four letter word for a fat kid that won't leave you alone. Dork. <laughs> Stings you real quick. I'm sitting there. I'm like, I'm not sure. Man. <laughs> I played bingo with my Aunt Mary Catherine all the time. Her and the girls. Mm-hmm. Ooh, man, that was intense. I don't think we ever played. I don't think I've ever been to a bingo hall. I don't oh. think I ever partake, partaken in any Buddy, of Buddy, when everybody's 70 and you're a chubby little kid, man, all the hard candy you can ask for. Mm-hmm. It smells like cigarettes and perfume, rooting through all their purses. Some crooked priest running the whole thing. <laughs> He's on the take. Oh, it was great, dude. <laughs> it was great. I can imagine a little you chatting it up with the girls. Oh, really dude. Getting into That's it. where I did my best work. They loved me. Mm-hmm. I'd be. I could. I could hold a conversation in anything that they were talking about. God, you know what I mean? Pot roast prices at that Ensalaco or something like that. <laughs> through the roof. It's crazy. <laughs> it is. <laughs> The ShopRite's bringing back the Can Can special soon. <laughs> ten, ten for ten. I was just talking to one of the nuns about this the other day. It's funny. Uh... Oh, I thought you were really telling me. <laughs> I thought you fell into like a now store. Like I was just talking to one of the nuns. Um, man, so I'd worked a room with the ladies. Also, speaking of one of the, I headed down the shore, sixth grade maybe, maybe younger. What, whatever. What year did? Uh, Amish Paradise come out, T Bone. Any any ballpark what, on the that? weirdo? Yeah, the- <laughs> yeah. I think ninety eight is my guess. Talk about being on the scene. 
<laughs> did you get a year on that? I did, yeah. Mr. Weedo Yankovic dropped the all-time classic, <laughs> Amish Paradise, in 1996. 1996, so I was 10. I was, he didn't I, miss, no, did he? Dude, so I was in fourth grade, and we uh, we were driving down on my mom's tan uh, Ford Taurus. No AC, Schwitzen. And I'm in the front. It's my sister. So if I'm 10, she's 16. Okay. Maybe. And three of her friends, there's four of them in the back seat of the car, is crammed in there. There you, well, there you know. Uh, uh, hey, and, ladies, you heard the new jams? Man, I couldn't <laughs> wait to put that on and sing it. <laughs> I could not wait. I, <laughs> I remember being like, ah, can I do it now? Like, you know, and she's like, all right, we'll get Because they, they were listening to their music or whatever. Cassette player uh-huh. up front. You got the perfume spritzer like an opera guy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Drinking hot tea and lemon and honey. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kevin Ryan. You do your own intro. <laughs> I couldn't wait to show off to these. At, I'm 10, they're 16. You started belting this out? Not belting. Show. I did rep. Repre- I Are you, sh- did you turn around? Well, I mean, I'm you know I'm playing the crowd. Get a turn around. <laughs> I'm a showman at the end of the day. You're all nervous. You're wiping your sweat off your palms oh, and your basketball man. shorts. <laughs> and I embarrassed myself. <laughs> I re- broke a couple of hearts that afternoon. Uh, <laughs> I remember KJ. the one was like, what is this? I was like, oh, fuck. I remember my sister being like, can we change it? My mom was like, give them one. Give them one. Yeah, put on somebody put on Come On, Ride the Train. Uh, oh, <laughs> man. Man. I, was like, I, I said a boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Let me hear you say, way you, way you. Dude, I, I'm looking at the top songs in 1996. God, the 90s had the worst music of I all time. I loved it. That's oh crazy. My You're God. crazy. Talk, no, that dude. pop, Get out of to here. be a 10 year old in the 90s, that pop on the radio was great. Yeah, you're nuts. What do you got? Uh,. The Macarena dominating the charts, dominating. I, I should have showed them that. Let them fucking. They would have been. They would have been slipping out of the seat. Now that's a dance you can do sitting. I felt like I, I. I heard that song and I listened to it and all that stuff. I I could never do those dance moves. Oh, the, I could. I, I could probably nail it right now. I could. The, that the electric slide or the one. Put it, your put your foot to the right. The your Macarena was just. One <laughs> Catch me on a Patreon. <laughs> That's a new special tomorrow, everybody. What's wrong with your brother? <laughs> oh, man. It was one of the, huh? Because they're like, you got to figure they're 16 year old girls. The last thing they want is a fat 10 year old rapping to them. <laughs> After he just farted in the car, probably. <laughs> I'm eating a hoagie. <laughs> That was for everybody. <laughs> you got extra onions on this? Dude, I imagine a hot car. I was probably eating a hot car. I probably had like a hot chicken parm too. A hot car, a hot meal, me rapping Weird Al Yankovic to these th- four girls. One of them was my sister. Why's your brother eating a bowl of chili in here? <laughs> Middle of June. <clears throat> Man, you stink. <laughs> That's all right. That's though. not nice. That's all right. I was a big in the scene, some would say. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, was that all from sleeping on the couch? I think so. Man. I forget. Uh, I think that was Great it. Great question. Um, this one's from Bill Bacon, $10 homie. Are you garbage if you brush your teeth in a restaurant bathroom? No. You don't think? No. Uh, it's got to be single occupancy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was. You can't have a dude fucking dropping a deuce and you're, <laughs> oh. you got your mouth open. Talk about particles. Uh, yeah. But you do that. You you do that sometimes. What? You like to brush your teeth after a meal. Not after a meal. Which I You do it sometimes here at Tutties. That uh, Yeah, that's if I've had 15 cups of coffee and 100 heaters and I'm going out. To you know, they I just, say, just to freshen up. They say it's it's good to train your body to to do that after you eat. Yeah, like it lets you know you're done eating and blah blah blah. Uh-huh. I saw an Instagram video about it. The other day. <laughs> That's where I get all my medical advice. It is. Uh, yeah, me too. Unfortunately, <laughs> eat till you're eighty percent full and then brush your teeth right after. That way, you don't want to eat. Uh, I could get through that though. What I could muscle through. That. Oh, I've definitely been going for a second Oreo. Going, this is terrible after you brush your teeth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, that don't. I mean, so Jake, shatter your tongue. 
Yeah, to me, I don't brush my teeth right when I wake up. I brush my teeth when I leave the like when I'm like my day's ready. Where are you keeping it though? That's the question. What the toothbrush? People, ro- dude. I used to when I worked at an all like an office at, at that law firm in Midtown. There would be a guy every day after after lunch, and I would be in. I would be in there, fuck, dropping heat in the stall. And I'd walk out, and he'd be in there brushing his teeth. I want to be like, dude, my butthole was just exposed no more than three feet away from you. Like, yeah, hey, you got to do it. I'm like, <laughs> Me, I didn't wash my hands, grabbed his ear. I don't. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I get it if you stay on top of it, but it's like, I guess if you're at lunch, I, I, I don't know. I mean, know. when we were jammed up, you, we, I was, sh- I would shave in there, in, in, like in between auditions and shit like that. Yeah, I mean, I would do that too. I would be changing, you would change. show- not showering, but you know, cleaning up, getting ready f- after my day job before sets. Yeah, for sure. But have, I mean, have you ever cut yourself shaving in a public restroom? I don't have never. Sh- I would never shaved like that in a I'd public freak restroom. out. The worst at a restaurant job upstairs before clocking in, just sticking uh, shit on your neck. Oh, like really? A scumbag. Oh, I let that ride. You got to catch me tomorrow on that bullshit. <laughs> I'll take the warning. I'm not shaving. Nuts. I was the worst, dude. My clothes were always dirty. I was always hungover. We've, we've mentioned it before, but when you get a waiter that came comes up to your table with five day old waiter pants on, you're like, dude. I, I know I've been I've been that guy, but. <laughs> Come on. A, ba- a dirty apron's the best. <sighs> oh, yeah. I, I used to have to, that. I mean, at Macy's, I used to have to wear a suit, and that suit, I had one, and it would just end up in a ball, and I'd have to wake up early, <laughs> super hungover, slash still drunk, throw that thing. I look at that man, looking like I just lost my house on the subway. <laughs> looking like I just she she took ra- everything. Getting railroaded in a oh, divorce. Oh, man. It's a rough, rough hang I was. Um, all right, this one's from Robert Lee. Long time, $10 homie. Never had one read. Uh, I asked my wife what her first concert was, and she confidently said it was a Tommy Lee concert that her dad made her go to on a school night when she was eight. Ooh. Man, Tommy Lee, that had to be, let me guess, that was probably 2000. I didn't know he had a solo career. Yeah, it was. Not to disparage it, the It legend. was big for Methods of Mayhem, I believe it was. Is was that, he drumming? It was drumming and singing. Really? I believe from, from the drum kit. I don't That's know. Tough to do. I didn't see him live, so I'm not sure. He would rock the uh, the Britney Spears mic too. Would yeah. he? Oh yeah. Few people can pull that off. Don Henley pulled it off. Phil Collins pulled it off, and I guess Tommy Lee. It's got to be a slow concert. Man, to look see. at the brain on Kippy. Tommy Lee, never a dull moment. 2002. What was the hit song off that? Uh, give me one second here. Method. It's got to be Methods of Mayhem. And I remember on the on the CD we bought it. We went to the, you know, is that the, the 2002 is the years I'm going to the mall. Like, you get dropped off at. Be a Sam Goody guy? Where'd you go? No, the wall was big. Yeah, Remember Power Records. No, it was the wall. And then uh, I think FYE popped in, but it was mainly the wall. Okay. All the big, every mall we would go to had the wall. I remember <laughs> that guarantee they had. I don't like the know wall the had a blue sticker on it. It was like, if you buy this at the wall, you can bring it back for any reason. And you would like, but then they stopped. So you would, we would like. Save them somehow. You would always have to keep that on there. So then if a CD did break, you could take it off a, a good one and put it on that one and be like, oh, huh. I'm return it or exchange it or something. I didn't know the wall. I knew Tower Records, Sam Goody. Yeah, I don't know. The and wall. Tower Records, when you walked in there, man, it was like the way that place smelled, that carpet was all right. I remember we went to one. My sister really wanted the Fuji CD. Okay. And we couldn't find it anywhere. And we went to like five different places and we found it at the Tower th- the, at the Tower Records on the Boulevard mm. in the Northeast. Did there you guys you see that viral clip of 50 Cent where some guy walked up to him and gave him 20 bucks? It was like, I stole your record in 1999. No shit. <laughs> it's cash, bro. <laughs> he take it? <laughs> he did. That's great. Shout out to 50. 50, hit me up. Come on. Love uh, I had a Curtis? Dream, I had a dream last night he was doing the show. No kidding. Uh-huh. Or I was hanging out with him, and I was trying to position myself <laughs> to ask to do the show. I was like, I'm a big Weird Al fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but what was I saying? Oh, would you get the hit off that, the single off that track? The na- I mean, you're a real dirtbag if you've ever owned the Tommy Lee single. The the single the, the single wasn't called Methods of Ma- the band was called Methods of Madness the, the meth madness or mayhem madness uh, method of mayhem mayhem all right so it was Tommy Lee and the method of mayhem yeah. I wonder who was up front 
No lead singer? What are you looking at? Him behind the drum that's kit? That's what I'm saying. It's got to be a... Well, that's you why... You got the bass player and the guitar player and then him? Oh, it's an all-star lineup, man. They got Marty O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> Marty! <laughs> that guy's a bar back. <laughs> got, probably a millionaire. They got John <laughs> Allen the third. Okay. He's uh, probably all studio guys cleaned up. Morgan Rose? Sounds cool. Mm -mm. Yeah, Marty O'Brien's the best. Uh... Uh... Oh, he's a drummer for Seven Dust. That's like a Big J uh, band. Yeah, they were. Which, they were. What's a J band? Big J, like Big J, our friend, Big the, Jason Okerson. Of course. Yeah. Oh, that's a Big, big J, J band. band. Big J likes them. I can see him. <laughs> he kind of. You've made it sound like that. Yeah, it was a like style J, of music. Like J was a style of music. Yeah, yeah it's a Big J band. Oh yeah, like, like, that's a big punk band. Oh yeah, yeah like like they're like, like a Japanese pop band. Or I something. thought I was out of the loop. I'm like, what the hell is J, J band? <laughs> Were you a ska I guy? Thought, you I thought you were on the scene. Were you, in, were you a ska guy? You Those records are sealed, sir, and they won't be opened <laughs> up again. The statue of limitations expired on that shit. I love the Mighty Boss, though. <laughs> hey, shout out Catch 22. Uh, um, yeah, a lot of ska. But, uh, really? Oh, yeah. Would you dance? Would you dance ska? Buddy. Skanking it. Catch me with my little all-white Sony Discman swapping between the... The original cast recordings and musicals and ska bands in middle school, dude. What Talk about a dork. Really? Oh. Listening to the scores from music. Like Which one? Like Wicked and shit. That was around back then? That guy's a wicked dork. No kidding. Yeah, huge fucking loser. <laughs> I thought that was uh, a newer production. Oh, trying to kick a little bit of a Dora, I'm sure. It's they have point. a movie coming out. Looks pretty good of Wicked. Um, what, uh, what disc man were you bumping? The CD disc man. Listen, we didn't get that shit. We got... Uh, the ga my mom worked for the Gap. This is probably in eighty two or eighty three. I know, but I'm saying that's not when CD like a disc man came out in like ninety nine. So you were to, in like college. I'm trying to build it up to it. The first, the first head unit. It was homecoming night. The first, what is it called? Personal Walk listening. Band. Personal. It wasn't. Listening. It was just radio. It yeah. Was, it was. It was. It was a radio that had a he that had headphones. A on. Walkman. Yeah. Trying to get reception on that. Thing. Oh yeah, I've had <laughs> them. Yeah. Jesus. Um, and then so you would have been. What year was? I mean, I think ninety nine. I had, I had, got, the, I had the yellow one that had the clamp on it, but it was second hand. Oh, those were. That was the nice one, the Sony Vio, yeah. Sony Vio, or something. I think it was or Sony Discman. There was a there was a version. I think of, it was a Discman. There was, was a version of Sony's. I think that the name was all disc. Everybody called it a Discman, whether uh -huh. it be by brand or not. Sony was the Discman. Sony was the Discman, and they remember they had they were like different colors. You get a blue one, a red one. Sounds a fucking, like a frisbee golfer. Yeah, <laughs> the Discman. I'm the Discman. <laughs> um, and man, those were the cool ones. I didn't have that. I had, oh, dude. I had a green see-through one that I won at a raffle on like a fundraiser for school, and this thing skipped. Before you put the CD in, this thing was this give thing you epilepsy. Was, oh man, this thing was skipping. Yeah, and my friends could run with her or like whatever, and it was just fucking. I dude, I'd be sitting on. You couldn't ride the school; it would shake on the school bus and would skip. So I'd have to ride like I'm holding a pizza or something. <laughs> oh yeah, that 10 second skip protection runs out quick. I didn't have any. I hated those ear things that went in, the ones that went around, but then they went. Oh, they, they that, pointed, that's that's man, American somebody, psycho. Somebody stuff. come up behind you and hit you with that. Oh, yeah, you'd be Ooh. deaf. <laughs> Those, and I never had the cool ones. The cool ones probably hit when I was in junior high. They were the regular headphones, but went behind and clipped over the ear. Oh, I, I hated think they, those I think things. they came with those Sony, yes. with those Sony stylized Discman, and I never had them. Dude, I had the fucking, I had the real <laughs> shitty ones. They're like, they had the metal, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Like you were in the traffic chopper? Uh-huh, and only one of them ever worked. You know what I mean? You'd have to do... This was real big. Did, did so you, you could hear what was happening. Did you have a method of trying to repair a scratched disc? Ooh, throw I it out. I think they said peanut butter was big. The oils and peanut butter, I think, would work. But I think that more came for PS2 games. Yeah, Toothpaste. Toothpaste. Really? Yeah. Did it yeah. work? It did. Crazy. It would just like fill in the. the That's what the they game. said. Yeah. I, I would know. just clean them off. That was it. I didn't put too much effort into it. Yeah, but they're scratch. You can't use them. Or certain songs yeah. wouldn't play. And yeah. yours already had peanut butter on them, so you were fine. <laughs> <laughs> and jelly. <laughs> um, I remember I had a I had a CD player, like a listening, a walking around CD player when the iPhone was out in like 2006. I still had. Well, a, that really separated. Your class, like an iPod. I don't know when I got an iPod. I Pat had the first one in two. Th not the, the 
first one I ever saw was 2004, 2005. We were juniors, seniors in high school. And we used to, I mean, to me, that, that might as well have been NASA mm-hmm. authorized. We would, he would, I'd be like, let me listen to a song on it. And I would like, for like two minutes, I'd listen to a song and be like, I'm cool. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Just listen to my iPod over here, you know? I think in 2007, I asked my, I, I wanted an iPod for Christmas and my brother got me an MP3 player. It was brutal. It, first of all, it was about 40 pounds. You could kill somebody with it. Mm-hmm. And I think it held like four songs or something. Like It was brutal. Yeah, I I famously said I bought the Zune the one time, which was Microsoft's answer, answer to the iPhone. Trash. Or the iPod, but. The price point was so much different. <laughs> Yeah, I had an iPad Nano, iPod Nano that I got no as a, kidding. that I got as a gift from somebody. At, at some point, they were just they were it's like they were giving them away. Well, that's what happened. They started giving away in all these promotional things, and I think my aunt got it in like some sort of gift bath, something. Like mm-hmm. my aunt got it for free through work or a contest or something. And she gave it to me, and I you couldn't, but I was already behind. It's just the one where it's it didn't a, have a screen. It no, was like that's a little... the iPod Run or something. Did it say Citibank on the back? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a free T shirt. That's what it was. It was very of that ill. State Farm. Yeah, my first iPhone wasn't until 2015 or 14, I think. I would just get secondhand phone once after the flip. I would buy secondhand phones off somebody at the, at the restaurant. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think. Uh, Which I still have a bunch of them, like in a bag somewhere. <laughs> Saving them for when the fucking, when the, when the nukes get dropped, be able to fucking, be able to go analog style. Yo. If you hear this, I am at Aunt Tootie's. I will be here every day from sunup to sundown, smoking heaters. If you turned any of those on, it just start blowing up with texts of people you owed money to 10 years ago. Oh, that's not <laughs> a bad idea. No, the service would be out, but that would be yeah, cool. Sh- <laughs> See who is still... Hey, you still banging, huh? I didn't know that. Your number's still good? I always memorize those. Sure. Yeah. The nefarious numbers? An addict will. Yeah. Oh, those are memorized. Mm-hmm. 100%. I don't, I don't, like, I don't know. I, the last phone number I memorized was probably one of my buddies from high school cell phone. That's it. Like, you know. Yeah, if you ever Like, get- I can still rattle off Pat, Delis, Flips. But that would be sometimes when you're calling from the house, like, You'd actually have to dial it from the house of like, oh, I'm going to call flip cell phone or whatever. Yeah, if you got them to my phone, don't call good pizza unless you got <laughs> cash on you. <laughs> <laughs> and the pizza's not great. Not going to lie. This is from your boy, Charlie. Have you or someone you've known ever taken the bed sheets and blankets home from a hospital stay? Oh, man, that's... I took the socks home with me from when I was supposed to get my endoscopy. That's normal. You take the socks. Everybody growing up, there was had a there was a they pair got a of hospital socks. Them. Yeah, of course. Yeah. In case you ever got a fucking. If you're taking souvenirs from the saddest moment of your life. Well, <laughs> I hear crazy. a lot of times, uh, like I've heard it of uh, specifically my family, I guess like cousins or whatever. Of when you go to like have a baby, they charge you for all that stuff in the room. So like they would take not the bed sheets, but like oh, there's these diaper, like you know they're... the IV drip. <laughs> Got the good stuff, Doc. <laughs> well, like, they'll put, like, there might be, like, I'm making this up. I don't even know if it is this, but in this world of, like, there's 10 diapers in the room. Mm-hmm. They're like, we're taking them with us because okay. they're charging you 15 bucks for the diaper. Sure. For each diaper or whatever at the fucking markup. Don't get me started on the healthcare system. Yeah. Um, so I know people would do that. But, like, they're charging you for it. That was always the, you're paying for it. You might as well take it. What do you think the rule is on, you know how they give you the blanket on the airplane? If it's a long flight, uh huh. You take that. I never do, but you could. Should you? I don't think you should. You can. Are they reusing them? They're washing them and resealing them. I don't know. I have a. Uni- they are. I have a United one at my house. That's pretty cozy. Yeah, I. I think. I think uh, this is what I think. I think the ones that are left there, they take, sanitize, and then wrap back up in those plastic bags because they're put in plastic bags a lot of times when you open them and they're like, oh, this is clean. This is brand Which new. Which I hate. I never know what to do with that plastic. It's, it's already jamming up the works in in, in the in the pocket. Jamming up your layout. Your layout. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever keep it in there? It just slides everywhere. I hate when you get there and you got to, like, I, I like clean running a tight shift. It's a longer flight, five hours or four hours in. I'm like, whatever. There's trash. There's an empty water bottle. But you there's start a bag of empty gummy bears. But I like start, if I had to. St- Especially in the takeoff. Yeah. You got you to gotta run a clean, you know, gotta, in case you got to get out of there. Yeah. You know what I mean? U.S. Marshal style. Jam you up. Um, all right. Let's see here. 
This one's from Blake. $10 homie, never had one read. Is it garbage to tell your barber to cut your bangs to line up with the mole on your forehead? So he's trying to... I respect that. He's got a mole somewhere on his forehead that he's trying to cover up. So he... That's smart. I don't know what else to tell you. If you got something Who's in that... Who's rocking bangs like that, though? I don't necessarily know bangs, but I mean, I don't think he's got the Caesar going. You know what I mean? But I, I, I know that his arch nemesis is the wind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, buddy. Me too. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, I think like, you know, or like if you got a quaff or if you go like you could, you know, hide it a little bit, I'm sure. You ever get a mole removed? You ever have a mole taken off? No, I never had any real skin issues. I had a wart or, that I ripped off and then never came back. For cosmetic reasons, I mean. No. No? I got this. I got like a freckle under my eye. It's a freckle moly type thing, but that's just. You whatever. rock that. Yeah. That's a couple of skin tags taken off. Never had anything. Uh, Some maybe. self taken off. Yeah, it's fucking gross. No, don't bring that up. I don't know why you continue to shove that into daily conversation with me. I've never once been like, oh, more about your skin tag, sir. And you, for, for the past decade, have been trying to cram it into nice conversation. toenail clippers. Oh, God damn. Um, this one's a relatively pro move in the days of technology here. This is from JB. Is it garbage to order an Uber to your buddy's house, not to pick up your buddy, to, but to pick up his set of darts because you and your other friend were too drunk to drive home and all your darts are broken? Iris, that's smart. If you want to play darts and you're somewhere and your boy's got darts, it's going to cost you 15 bucks. Like Uber package or Uber, whatever? They do that in New York. I don't know if they do that in the Burbs or another. But in New York, if you forget your keys, I can send an Uber to my house. My wife will put the keys in the Uber and drive them to me type thing. Hmm. Uh, I mean, that is a garbage. I mean, to play darts is nuts. Just to play, you got to be really you got a hot game going. Gotta what are you really do? jonesing for a dart game, dude? <laughs> so that was that started because someone was talking some shit. Yeah, yeah. it's got to yeah. settle do this. right now. Do right settle. now. All my darts are broken, so I don't know what to do. All right, let's send the Uber over to Jimmy's house. Darts was big for us for a long time, college and after college. When I mean, it would be a, it'd be a. The pregame was a 30-pack of Coors Light, typically, or whatever we get our hands on, and just probably, like, five or six games of darts, crush those beers between, like, you know, four or five of us, and then scurry out into the night and get shot down. <laughs> no bullseyes after that, huh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, let's see here. This one's just classic. This is from David. Have you ever said, this is a nice paper plate? <laughs> Oh, yeah. For sure. For I sure. remember for a little while. Which I don't love the nice ones because I don't. I, it's too much. The nice ones now are too much plate, not as much paper plate. You feel. But then you get that happy medium. It's waxy but stiff. I, yeah. I kind of like that. But the plastic ones that are disposable, no, throw them away. Like, if you have to ask, am I saving this? It's yeah. too nice. Are you saving? No, you throw them away. Let's save that. A paper plate should be like you should be standing, laughing, talking. That's too formal. Those went right in the dishwasher. Yeah, that's nuts to me. Yeah, they were there. Come out melted. A couple of parties were happening for that. Put it on cold water. You'd mm -hmm. be all right. Uh-uh. Yeah, for a little while, we thought we were real fancy. We were banging with the uh, the paper plate holder. It was usually wicker. Oh, yeah. We, my Denise still has that. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You put your paper plate in there. Wait, in there? Yeah, it was. It's, it was, it's like a wicker paper plate holder. Yeah. Like, each individual paper plate would get put in there. Oh, my God. We had that at one point. Yeah. Wait, I'm confused. So, like, you would eat out of this wicker thing? Imagine a perfectly paper plate-sized wicker, almost like cookie tin. It's, like, circular with a little wall, so the, the paper plate just doop, pops right into it. Snap into place. And you would each have one of these? Yeah. Yeah. And then when you were done, you would take your paper plate and you'd throw it out and you'd put your wicker basket back. I don't think I ever use these. We have a we have one of those. A, we have a wicker basket that they all sit in. No, I'm to these. Yeah, the, no, the, I, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I understand. I'm explaining this that. Is, I, a sleeve. I guess this would be the best term for this. It would be a paper plate sleeve. Yeah, another call. Made I'm of at wicker. Them. Paper plate holders, ten inch wicker paper plate holders. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've never used them. Real classy. No, not, uh, no, no, they no, are no. not. No, you don't think? No, classy. That, that is sitting there with a nice thing of potato no. salad. That is it? what trash people think is yeah. a classy maneuver. Listen, I'm not saying it's not a pro move or whatever. It ain't classy, huh? 
classy. Oh, they were hot enough, back in the you're day. You're trying to church up a paper plate. You couldn't do a you lot are, of people because you, you didn't have that you, many. You are what you are. You are what you are. You yeah, can't. If you're I mean, drinking Franzi out of a wine glass. You're still drinking <laughs> Franzi. On. Yeah. No, I mean, just, just accept who you are. You're eating off a paper plate. It is what it, which I love. Some of my best meals have been off paper plates. Oh man! I want to switch to them, and I tried recently in the house. And she don't, she don't. The you're the uh, the European bro. Don't go you for it. You can't be doing that. Why? It's so much better. I always use. Multiple. Been doing it for about a year, bro. I mean, you're you're living on your own. That makes sense. I what's the problem? I do like, multiple. I think you have four or five together. You get a nice sturdy plate. But if Cut. I'm cut steak on that thing if i'm just making like you know say a frozen pizza or something i ain't gotta be just throw to th- th- throw the slice on the thing go watch tv sure how do you handle a frozen <clears throat> sorry one second Man, mucus how- marty <laughs> how do you how do you handle a frozen pizza that doesn't come with the cardboard underneath to use to pull it out sucks i hate it if pull it, it out where so like, you know like it doesn't a- come with the cardboard circle the, the for the ba- for the tray just the box it's just the box Pizza in a bag. What you, I do real- you use the cardboard circle after it's cooked? Oh yeah, yeah. To put it on and cut it on. You do a hundred. Per- I believe because that's- you guys raw dog them. You don't put them on a cookie sheet, right? No, that would be insane to do. Their bottom's not going to be crispy. Yeah, I, pu- I put it. No, on a the idea. I have to. I'm. I'm told I have to put it on a cookie. No, you sheet. put it on the or tin foil. You put it on the. You put it right on the tray. You take it off the the cardboard thing. You put it in there, and then you when you you. Slide it out onto the cardboard circle. You put it down, and that's what you cut on. Oh, really? I will use the box if I have to use the box. Now, here's the million-dollar question with the box. Do you disassemble the box so you can flip it inside out and make a little tray, or are you raw-dogging it right on the outside? It was in the freezer. That stuff's all killed. I'm raw-dogging it on the box. <laughs> I knew it. Yeah. I knew it. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, inside out. No, but it's also like you see enough paper plates from a standpoint of like the heat onto that paint, like in the ink in that box. Like that's probably ah, not the best. Get out I, of I, here. I, I'm just saying it's probably that's not the, the flavor. Best. So I'll do that. What are you talking though. about or if uh, there is a we do have a cooking sheet that because the Kali powers who I wanted, which I was a big fan of for a long time, still am if the money's right. Ain't them. Uh, <laughs> I will. Uh, they used to come with the cardboard, then stopped. So I had to, I will use a cookie sheet, but I don't like that because I don't like co- doing a cookie sheet because then the fucking cookie sheet don't fit in there. I got to wash a cookie sheet. Yeah, cook all washing a cookie sheet <sighs> sucks. Sinks, never gets dry. Ooh. Suds on the bottom. Man. Jammed up. Those I, things get so gross so quick. I know. Can't stand the cookie sheet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, let's see here. We got time for one more. Uh, this one's from Hanzi Scheme. Pretty Hanzi. good. $10 Chicago, homie. Ever wear tear away pants with no intention of doing anything athletic? I think most people that are wearing them aren't doing anything athletic. I don't think I ever wore them. I've, I've, well, my brother had a pair that I adopted for a little bit, but I didn't have breakaway pants. We body. had them for wrestling. That makes sense. Our wrestling, like our uniform was part of it was that. Of course. We danced on the weekends. <laughs> Sitting on a couch like you're checking into a game, you just rip them off and sit down immediately. <laughs> just to just to furiously masturbate. Uh, we gotta That's wrap it up, right. gang. Gang, what a fun episode, boys! What a fun one, Kip. Congratulations on the special, gang. Thank you. Check it out tomorrow night. If you're listening to this the night it comes out, uh, Tuesday or I'm sorry, Thursday, March 14th. Uh, my half hour comedy special will be uh, will be on the Are You Garbage page. Check it out. Share with a friend. Be in the the we're gonna do the live premiere. Be in the chat. The whole nine yards. We appreciate it. The support you showed Foley was great. Mm-hmm. Thank uh, you. Looking forward to this one as well. So thank you very much. We yeah. love you. Grab a ticket to the live show, gang. Yeah, live show. Come fir- see us. First round is Charlotte, Nashville, Atlanta, and Tampa. Get those tickets. We appreciate all the support. Uh, You're the fucking best. Thank you. See you next week. Peace. Peace.